Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right in their deck builder and buy the singles there. If you want to support Command Valley directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley to sign up today. Today I'm going to be taking you through another Zendikar Rising Commander with Verizal the Split Current. Verizal is a legendary creature serpent. He's a 0-0 that costs X, a green, and a blue. He reads, Verisol enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each mana spent to cast it. And whenever you cast a kicked spell, you may remove two plus one plus one counters from Verisol. If you do, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Verisol offers a unique strategy to Commander. Kicker Tribal. I don't think there's ever been a Commander that suits the archetype more than Verisol does. I was instantly drawn in when I saw this revealed, and I'm excited to show you what I've come up with. The deck aims to utilize Verisol's copying ability to get more value out of high costing kicker spells. Obviously, it's going to be expensive to cast these spells for the kicker cost, but fortunately we have green and blue in our color identity and have some of the best ramp available because of it. So the game plan is to use our ramp engines to get Verisol out early with a bunch of counters and then start copying crazy valuable kicker spells to dig through our deck and find our win cons. Let's start out with the ramp because there is a lot of it in this deck. If we're not ramping for the first couple of turns into the game, we're on a slower track than we want to be, and it's going to be harder for us to cast these big spells. There are a couple of these spells that synergize especially well with our commanders, specifically Elfame Druid, Grow from the Ashes, and Primal Growth. Elfame Druid will give us extra mana for kicker spells, tapping for two green instead of one if we use it for a kicked spell. Grow from the Ashes and Primal Growth are both kicker spells that will search for two lands and put them right onto the battlefield untapped if we pay their kicker costs. With Verisol's ability, these end up getting us four lands out at once, all untapped, which is a great place to be. Primal Growth is a little bit harder to cast because we can't sacrifice Verisol, but there are ways of making tokens in this deck, so that's avoidable. We also have Vastwood Surge, a new card from Zendikar Rising, which is a bit more expensive to kick at eight mana, but it gets us two lands and puts two plus one plus one counters on each creature we control. Again, if we copy it, it's replacing all of those counters that we're using to copy it, and it's getting us four lands. I'm including Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath in my list, but you definitely shouldn't take this as a sign to go out and pick one up because he's going to be expensive for probably a long time. He's a very, very good card. I just happened to have access to one of them from a previous deck that I built, so I'm taking advantage of him here. Similar effects can be achieved with Growth Spiral, which I've also included in the deck, and Urban Evolution to get some extra lands from our hand onto the battlefield and get us some card advantage. We're playing a lot of the typical ramp spells that you'd normally see, including Cultivate and Kodama's Reach, which both get us two lands, one in the hand and one in the battlefield, Nature's Lore and Sky Shroud Claim to get more forests, and Rampant Growth. For Mana Rocks, the notable inclusions are Everflowing Chalice and Skyclave Relic, which are both kicker spells, which means they can be copied with Verisol. Copying Skyclave Relic will get you six Darksteel Ingots, so it's a pretty all-star card for this deck. And the same goes for Everflowing Chalice for any size that we want, except it's just colorless mana. Additionally, we're running Arcane Signet, Simic Signet, and Soul Ring, as well as Thought Vessel for the times when our hand size gets too big. We've got a couple more with Nissa, who shakes the world and Seedborn Muse, which will both help us get more advantage out of our lands. Nyxbloom Ancient, which isn't really a ramp card as more of an enabler for some of the big spells that we're going to talk about later, but it's still very important for the deck. And Growing Rites of Itlamok that flips into a sweet Gaia's Cradle that you definitely want in your green creature decks. Moving into the card advantage section, we'll see here that there are a lot of ways to get a lot of cards all at once in this kicker deck. These kicker all-stars are Sitinal Wood Readers, Sphinx of Lost Truths, and Field Research, all of which draw us extra cards if we kick it and can be doubled with Verisol to make them 
actually more mana efficient than they would be. It feels great to drop these early on in the game and get a handful of cards after we've ramped a ton and emptied our hands as much as possible. These will be the best cards to help us find our win cons. Inscription of Insight is another new card that has Kicker, which serves a lot of purposes in this deck. It puts tokens onto the battlefield, returns some creatures of ours or someone else's to hand, and scrying and drawing cards. You'll find a couple of cards like this that can return a creature or non-land permanent to our hand, and that flexibility is nice for both interaction and for helping us get more counters on Verisol. See, returning Verisol to hand when he runs low on counters and casting him again from our hand will be cheaper and more flexible than getting him back into the command zone and recasting him from there in most cases. And this will help us mitigate our commander attacks. Two other such cards are Blink of an Eye and Into the Royal, which are exactly the same card and both return a non-land permanent to our hands if we kick it we draw a card. Beast Whisperer and Guardian Project are the only two card draw engines in the in this section that don't have kicker. And that's just because they're too good with the big creature decks and it, it would be a shame to leave them out. Jace Mirror Mage gets pretty nutty with the copy shenanigans of Verisol. Copying Jace gives us not one, not two, but three Jace Planeswalkers onto the battlefield. It would normally be four, but one dies to the legend rule. And those three will give us a scry and draw engine that's going to be very hard for our opponents to deal with. This Planeswalker is amazing and everyone should pick up a copy for their blue decks. The last two kicker spells in this category are Marasa Spratling and Tazim Royal Mage, which are both new cards and both very helpful at getting spells back from the graveyard for some recursion action. And again, copying them with Verisol makes them even more mana efficient. Marasa Sproutling turns into a more efficient Eternal Witness just for kicker spells. And the Royal Mage costs two less than casting two Archaeomancers, which is amazing. Moving on to our interaction, let's talk about our kicker pieces first. Starting with the counter spells, we have Prohibit and Spell Contortion. Both of these have Kicker, which means they're a little more expensive than your typical Kicker spell, but Spell Contortion is actually a card draw engine in disguise, and Prohibit will probably help us with most of the value pieces our opponents are casting. We also have Plasm Capture, which isn't a Kicker spell, but does protect us from every other type of spell, and can give us some extra mana to pump into Verisol or something else on our next turn. I've reasoned that putting the more expensive counter spells to cast is fine in this deck because of the kicker and because we're ramping and there's there's so much mana available to us there are definitely a lot of counter options though so take your pick from what you have available i'd also recommend looking into void slime negate or counter spell territorial allosaurus can help us with some spot removal for a creature or two and mold shambler can help us with the non-creatures both are great because we get a big body onto the battlefield with each of them and copying them helps even more vines of vastwood is a great protection spell that only costs two mana if we kick it protecting our commander or maybe pumping it up significantly for a swing at one of our opponents our last kicker spell is also our one board wipe in the deck i'd recommend putting in more but this is just how it ended up for me. Slin Voda, the Rising Deep. He's legendary and he costs a ton. He costs 10 mana if we want to take advantage of the kicker. So he's actually one of the few kicker spells we don't really want to copy with Verisol because there's really not a point. Nevertheless, if we do kick him, we have a sweet 8-8 on the battlefield and his board wipe doesn't affect our commander because Verisol is a serpent. Also, feel free to swap any of these interaction spells for more board wipes, depending on your meta and what you need. Three more pieces I put in the interaction category are Beast Within, which is always a good spot removal piece for any occasion. Mirror Maid, which will help us counter some of our opponent's advantage by copying it and taking it for ourselves. And Last, we have Leyline of Anticipation, which I've included because not a lot of spells in our deck can be cast at instant speed, and they would be much better if they could be cast at instant speed. I've already talked about a bunch of the kicker cards in the deck, but there are more in the deck that have specific functions that don't really fall into any of these other categories. There are also cards that synergize well with kicker, so I'm going to go through all of these cards here. Let's start with Inscription of Abundance and Strength of the Tajiru. The inscription serves a lot of purposes. 
just like the other one. But its primary function is to add counters to Verisol when it's kicked and copied. It can also gain us a bunch of life and get us some fight triggers. So those are nice pluses and Verisol is going to be big so maybe we can take advantage of that. Strength of the Tajiro is in the deck for the same reason. It's crazy efficient at putting a bunch of counters on Verisol. A note is that we can't use the multi-kicker ability unless we have legal targets to pump up, which means we probably shouldn't cast this unless we have our commander and at least one other creature out. So it's less good early game, more good when we have a more developed board state. But if we do get to cast it and copy it, we get twice X plus one plus one counters, which is crazy efficient and gives us a lot of gas for copying. While it doesn't have kicker, I'll include Evolution Sage here because proliferating Verisol when lands enter the battlefield is very nice for not having to return it to our hand as often. And it also works well with all of the ramp in our deck because all of those double as counter engines if Evolution Sage is out. Aether Figment and Cragplate Bayloth are in the deck because they're beefy and basically no other reason. Copying these will give us either two unblockable 3-3s three or two uncounterable trampling hasty 10-10s ten respectively, which is absolute insanity. Also, pumping Aether Figment up with a Strength of the Tajiru is a nice bonus. Arctic Merfolk is another spell in here that's in here for returning Verisol to our hand if it gets low on counters. The downside is we can't really copy that kicker cost just the creature itself but it's still a really efficiently costed bounce spell that has kicker and it gets us two bodies so it's pretty good in the deck gnarled colony is yet another new spell kicking it makes it bigger but the best part is that it gives everything with plus one plus one counters on the battlefield that we own trample which includes our commander since it's always going to have counters on it. If the opportunity is right, we can just make Verisol huge and use Gnarled Colony to give it the power to get through our opponents. There are a lot of other big creatures that can take advantage of this in the deck too, and even if we don't have any of those out, we get two 4-4s four for five that have Trample, and that's not bad either. Croson Druid I've also included just because the prospect of gaining 20 life at once was too good to pass up. It's certainly not a big beater, but it can help in a pinch. We then have Wolfbriar Elemental, which we can pump a ton of green mana into and get a ton of wolf tokens, twice the amount that we pump into it. On a similar note, Rooster Drakes is fantastic for this. Copying it will allow us to get two flying drakes every time we cast a kicker spell, and that adds up really fast. Even just casting this for one and having that one drake every time we cast a kicker spell feels really good. We have some kicker synergy cards in here as well, all from Zendikar Rising, and really help make this deck perform well. My favorite is Coral Helm Chronicler. He's a creature merfolk wizard. He costs two and a blue, and he's a two-two. He says, whenever you cast a kicked spell, draw a card, then discard a card. When Coral Helm Chronicler enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a card with a kicker ability from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. He gives us some extra card advantage and lets us dig a bit for a kicker spell if we don't have one readily available. And if we discard something that we need later, we have those recursion engines that we talked about earlier. Vine Gecko will make our kicker spells cost less and it will get bigger whenever we cast one. Merfolk Falconer will give us some extra scrying power whenever we cast kicker spells. And Low Mage's Familiar is not only a mana dork, but it will let us gain some life every time we cast a kicker. All of these just give us a little bit more gas to get us to our win cons. Speaking of which, let's talk about the most powerful spells in the deck. I'd like to start with Seagate Stormcaller, which costs seven to kick and will copy an instant or sorcery spell with CMC two or less if we cast it later that turn. And if we kick it, we get to copy it twice instead. Copying this with Verisol, that adds up to four copies of the next CMC two spell we cast. We have a couple of options from all throughout the deck tech that we can use here, like ramp spells or card draw engines. We have a couple of options from earlier, but my favorite one has to be Maddening Cacophony. And copy it with Verisol, each opponent is going to mill half of their library. And if we do the Stormcaller before it, we're going to end up with six copies of this effect, milling everybody's library in half. I did the math, and no matter what size of deck they have, they're going to have either one or zero cards left in their library after that. If they have less than 64 cards in their library, then that's the entire library that they're milling. 
This isn't a mill deck by any means, but you can't deny that six copies of that kind of spell is going to win you a game or two. If you get 13 mana, you have these two in your hand, it's most likely game over for your opponents unless they have an answer for it. A backup for Seagate Stormcaller, if you don't have the mana to kick it or not enough counters to copy it on Verisol, you can use Twinning Staff. The staff will add an additional copy to every time we want to copy something. So Seagate Stormcaller has a base rate of two mana without kicking it and will copy the next spell twice if we have twinning staff, no matter what. Then if we use Verisol to copy the next spell, if it has kicker, we'll get five copies of that spell, which admittedly isn't as good as six, but it's still pretty close and it's definitely going to do some damage. Twinning Staff does so much work on the battlefield and it's definitely going to feel good to get extra copies off of everything that Verisol copies. We have two more kicker spells that are extremely powerful in the deck, the first of which being Rite of Replication. Rite of Replication makes us five copies of something for nine mana, or ten copies if you copy it with Verisol, which is absolutely bonkers on any creature and is going to get you ahead very quickly. There are actually not a whole lot of useful options in the deck because we can't copy those kicker abilities. Seagate Stormcaller is probably our best bet, but mainly we are aiming to copy something that our opponents control and take advantage of whatever big creature they have on their board. This is especially great against big creature decks. The other card, which unfortunately I cannot target with Rite of Replication, but is still great, is Myriad Construct. Myriad Construct is an artifact creature construct for four. It's a four, four, and it has a kicker cost of three. If it was kicked, it enters with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each non-basic land your opponents control, which is going to be a lot, especially at the point where you have seven mana. When Miri Construct becomes the target of a spell, sacrifice it and create a number of 1-1 one, one colorless construct artifact creature tokens equal to its power. So first, for seven mana, we get two big fatties, copied with Verisol, of course, that are already going to be hard to deal with. If someone else tries to deal with them with targeted removal, that will just cause them to split into many, many small constructs, and of course, we can also target them with something to make them split as well, like one of our pumping spells from earlier. In a deck where we don't necessarily have a good way to go wide, but it's still focused around creatures, Myriad Construct can give us the fuel that we need to close out the game. Finally, we have our mana base, which isn't very special, especially because most of our ramp is going to be searching for basic lands. You can make it as complex as you want, but I've included 23 forests, and nine islands. We've included a reliquary tower in here, again, where we have too many card advantage engines and we can't cast spells fast enough. For the rest, we have breeding pool, which is tutorable with anything that's looking for a forest, command tower, and hinterland harbor for a total of 35 lands. You could potentially run even fewer lands if you need some extra slots for interaction or something else. Just be careful to not go too low unless you don't want to see any in your opening hands. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my deck tech on Verisol, the split current. I'm very excited to try this deck out. I hope to play it in front of you guys one day. If you haven't already, sign up for our Patreon. There are lots of exclusive benefits. We have a Discord. We're talking up a storm about all of these spoilers and, and brewing up decks. And it's really a lot of fun to interact with our fans. You get merch, you get other perks. It's awesome. It supports us directly, and I can't stress it enough how much we love our patrons. Go sign up today, patreon.com slash command valley. Anything helps us continue to make the content that you love. If you want another way to support us and get cards while doing it, you can sh do all of your shopping through Game Grid Lehigh's website. We've linked in the description an affiliate link, and if you go through there, anything that you buy will also help the Command Valley grow. They ship nationwide, so wherever you are in the nation, you can get your card singles there. They're selling the Commander Precons, they're selling Zendikar Rising boxes. You can get all of those shipped directly to you and support the channel while they're doing it. It's a win-win, really, and they have great prices too, and they're super friendly, so go there. We've also included a copy and pasteable deck list in the description here. You can go to their site, copy it into their deck builder, and it will just auto-populate everything in there if you're really a fan of this deck. We have live streams every Tuesday at seven o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Join us for some Brawl and Arena. Griffin is doing a fantastic job. It's really a lot of fun. You should really go check it out. He's, he's fantastic. And if you haven't already, 
Go follow us on Twitter at Command Valley P1 and like us on Facebook. There's a link to all of that below. Post there every time we post something. And if that's the way that you want to get notified, that's a great way to do it. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.